Hi, everyone. Welcome to another action-packed 20-minute power play, which we do in the first week of every month. So as always, super excited to get started again today. My name is Sam, I'm the head analyst at Crypto Consulting Institute. And pretty much these videos, if you've never seen them before, just bringing you a snapshot of what we look at during the entire month um, gone previous. So some exciting news, some key points, maybe some insights in terms of charting and also on-chain data that might give you a bit more of an idea about what we cover with our clients through the VIP group and also the advanced mastermind group. So look, let's crack in. We don't have much time um, and I know you want to get the most out of this session. So I want to start here as we always do on the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Now, boy, have we had a pretty interesting week, a very, very exciting week in the charts. We've had a let's say about a 40% drawdown, give or take a few percentage points. Uh, now, most people are running for the hills at the moment. And this is where you want to flip that mindset. As an investor, as a uh, long-term investor, also as a short and mid-term investor, these points where everyone is running out of the store when everything's on sale is exactly the time where you want to do the exact opposite of 99% of the herd. You want to become the sheepdog in this situation. So flip that mindset once you've had the right training, we'll show you the strategies and how to action this. But by flipping your mindset, you suddenly are in a position to create some serious wealth. So the point of maximum financial opportunity is actually when this market is going down or when it's going sideways. Not many people tell you that. A lot of people buy this market in a peak state, get very excited. A lot of uh, you know, dopamine and dolphins are starting to release, thinking, oh boy, this is going to go to a million, it's the next Bitcoin, yada, 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 and lo and behold, next minute, it's done a 50% drop, and that's across the board. If Bitcoin drops and altcoins get absolutely smashed, so some key supports were taken out, and it just ensured that the market got absolutely nuked, and all that excitement and euphoria that we've been building over this last a uh, little while, especially in altcoins, just got uh, evaporated. And we'll have a quick chat about the derivative situation in the market. But right now, this is where we want to look. So it's the sentiment. Right now, we're sitting at 28. We got down even lower than that. We got into the 10. So now 28, yesterday 25, last week 34. And look at that, last month 75. So the market was in more of a peak state. We're in a greedier state than where we are now. If we just go to the max, <clears throat> this is the chart of the fear and greed over time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you can see we were up here in the 70s. Uh, now at the previous all-time high, we we're in the 90s. So that can tell you something. We're in those high areas of euphoria where the market's just like, yes, this is not going to end. We generally do have a correction. Now, where we are now in the 28, if we look back into areas that we've seen previous you know, teens, uh, 20s, a concentration of this negative sentiment, you really want to watch the extremes. If we're ever at the extreme of sentiment on one end, you know, absolutely fearful, panic, depression, anger, pay attention. It's probably a great time to start accumulating a position. If we're ever at the other spectrum, that full-on greed mode, expect a pullback. Uh, exactly in the mid-center is probably where you want it to be if we're you know, starting to move higher and the, uh, the sentiment just smack bang in the middle. Retail, uh, they have a funny, uh, a funny angle on this market. They absolutely get uh, overhyped when they shouldn't and uh, you know they're not very hyped when they when they should be so uh, yeah what we want to look at is this concentration um, of fear and greed in these areas so that's where you really want to pay attention and start to think all right the chart's looking reasonably bad the sentiment's looking reasonably bad what might happen next um, so that's where we are at the moment after a 40 percent retracement we've cracked some key levels we've regained fifty thousand, which is a good start but right now we're at that opposite end of the spectrum, exactly like we were when we were at uh, 30,000 before we went to 60,000, exactly where we were when we were at 40,000 before we went to 69,000. So this market is volatile and you need to know that. Uh, and you also need to know that volatility is what makes this market so amazing. It cuts both ways. Yes, it could fall 20, 30, 40% in a day or two days, but over the year it can go up 250%. Um, so overall we are making higher floors all the time, but volatility is a reason you can make life-changing wealth in these markets and you just need to know how to harness it and we can teach you that. Um, and just here's a, a visual illustration of the last bull market in 2017 and early 2018, just showing you exactly what we're experiencing now uh, happened in 2017 to a degree. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six situations where we had uh, higher than 30, let's just say higher than 30% percentage point, higher than 30% retracements 
on the way up to the final top in the market. And each one of these pullbacks is probably like where we are now, where sentiment is absolutely the dogs like, oh, this is over, the bull market's over, crypto can't go any higher, <clears throat> I'm done, I'm getting out, I'm selling at a loss. And lo and behold, market reverses, uh, these sort of dips are bought up and there's not much standing in the way of the next big pulse up and then the next big pullback down. So as you can see, the volatility is there. You will not see this volatility in traditional markets at all. And that is, again, what makes it so exciting uh, and so lucrative for a lot of people when you know how to harness it. All right, and just to illustrate this as well, I've gone back and just shown you the different price floors that can eventuate uh, in the in the price action as it goes higher. So this is 2017. Now, this chart's a little bit noisy. I'll just try and pull it across like that. We'll get rid of the volume bars just quickly. So this is 2017, very similar to the chart I just showed you, but you can see the floors of price action where we have a bit of an over exuberance. We have a pullback potentially a really scary dip where a lot of people think it's over and then we have the pulse back up. Another floor, we have a new break to a new high then we have a pullback, a uh, pretty scary pullback, thinking it's all over, then we move up again, then we have another all-time high, then another pullback and a scary dip beneath that level. Uh, and you can see the moving averages moving up there nicely as well. We'll teach you all about that in the course. Uh, and then you have the final pulse up. And then that's when you really want to pay attention to on-chain signals, um, sentiment, and a few other metrics that we can show you that the market has finally turned. Uh, and it is really, really hard uh, to pick it, uh, but you can put the odds in your favor. And that is why it is such uh, a good strategy. And we'll show this, you this as well, that uh, to taking profits on the way up is the successful way to go. You never just want to be all in or all out of the market. It's, that is a fool's game. If you're all in, you never know when the top is and then you're going to sell too late. Uh, and you're, you're going to be a very unhappy camper. You're going to get very emotional and uh, be very attached to the swings in this market. Same with being all out of this market. You might feel just as bad as if you were in the market watching the volatility absolutely pull the rug from under you. Now, this is where we are at the moment. I want to show you this in relation to 2017, like I just did, with these price floors. So new floor, we broke out of 20,000, which is previous all-time high. Then we burst up, new high. Then we came back down, a bit of scary dip. People saying, okay, that was probably the top at 43,000. Come back down, scary dip. That looks very similar, doesn't it? Then we come back up, made a new high, come back down, scary dip. So you see, it does repeat. But this overall structure that we're painting now is different 2017, and that is to be expected. No bull market, bear market will be exactly the same as the last, but they might rhyme. And what we're seeing here in terms of an overall long-term bullish structure is this market is just moving higher with each pullback it does. So if you're, if you're ever worried about the motion of being too zoomed in on the daily four hour and whatnot, you can go to the weekly or you can go to the daily and just take a real step back and zoom out. Just see what the overall trend is doing over a long period of time. This is from uh, where we are now, December 21, all the way back to November 2020. So this is a long period of time. If you are patient and you look at these trends, you can make a ton of money and live your life. You can go outside, uh, you know, go for a walk, not have uh, your phone buzzing all the time or being woken up in the middle of the night, trying to action strategies that quite frankly, just don't work. Um, if you're day trading, looking at leverage, just don't. Uh, you will eventually give back all your money to the casino in the end. Um, this market is geared to take money from you at an unprecedented rate and very, very few people, I'm going to say even the, the top 1% are successful leverage trading in this market and even then they lose. So yeah, if you think you're better than them, go for it, learn a hard lesson, but just do it with money you can afford to lose. Uh, but overall, if you invest long-term in this market, you can make some serious wealth. All right, so where we are now, right here, again, not the end of the world, but we have taken out some key levels. So we're at that all-time high around 69,000. We have absolutely busted through uh, some really major resistance levels. And if you follow our newsletter, we did have a bit of a danger zone here at around about 52. And if it broke down, then we do have to reevaluate the situation. However, the reaction off the 200 moving average and how we've rallied back above, uh, say, 50,000 is quite convincing for me. I like what I see here. And the market is bouncing off this key volume support. So overall, looking quite nice for a bit of a rally. And we'll see what happens towards the back end of the year. The macro environment, so the, the larger picture of traditional finance plays a massive role here. Uh, it didn't help that the Omicron variant uh, came out the news. There was a bit of a risk unwind. So a lot of risky assets around the world were sold off. Traditional markets took a hit in terms of, say, the S&P 500 in the US. Then there's a bit of a domino effect. Bitcoin does get hit. This got hit harder than you might expect uh, because we had a lot of uh, derivatives in this market. The market was very 
hyper leverage, just talking about leverage. So leverage traders were heavily in this market and they didn't think that this market would go below some of these levels. So they had stop losses in here uh, that they would sell their position at those levels. When the market actually fell through those levels, it creates a cascade. So suddenly all this sell pressure is unlocked on the market where they get sold uh, into USDT or cash or whatever the exchanges have. And it creates this cascade that rolls downwards. And that's what happened with the leverage. We had uh, a crazy amount of open interest, which I won't go into much further, but that's what causes these big extra, you could say extended crashes that maybe you don't see uh, in traditional finance. But it's what makes this market so amazing. There's no circuit breaker. There's no one to turn it off. It's 24 seven, uh, you know, all running all the time. It's running global. Uh, and these things can happen. And often it happens over the weekend when there's uh, order books that are a bit thinner. Again, that's probably going into a little bit more depth. Just want to quickly highlight the momentum indicator down here. Very simple RSI. But have a look where we were down at 30,000 here. So this is the last uh, bottom in this area that you could uh, that you could say a little bottom there. And on the RSI, you can see how we duck below 30 and we start to veer down into the low 20s. Well, each successive move higher, we've created a higher low. So that's higher than last, it's higher than the last. But what we've done here, we've actually gone a bit lower and we've retested this area here. So the last time we were in this area was in that 30,000 region. So that tells me that, you know, sellers are starting to get a little bit exhausted here. If they cannot really put in the knife and send us down to, I don't know, something ridiculous like 40,000 or 32,000, which right now seems a bit unlikely. You know, mid 40,000s still is quite probable, but um, 32,000, that's quite unlikely. If The sell pressure would have to be immense on this market. And what we're seeing in the data just doesn't support that. It shows that uh, exchange reserves are actually going down. So they're at record lows. So this sudden sell pressure was uh, via derivatives and also from whales just suddenly moving onto the exchanges and selling in a bit of a panic. Uh, and short-term speculative holders. So that is something I want to uh, pay close attention to. Uh, all other cryptocurrencies, look, they all react to Bitcoin. I'm not going to go into them today. Uh, and they there are some that act in a bit of a microcosm. Ethereum's a bit different as well because there's a bit of a deflationary metric happening at the moment where the supply is really getting hoovered up. So that is looking rather bullish, even though Bitcoin is taking a hit. All right, uh, just as pointing out, this is our advanced, um, advanced mastermind group for our course. Uh, I did a full write-up on exactly what happened during uh, last week's crash uh, over the weekend. And I just highlight the whole the risk elements around the world and how traditional finance reacts um, or how crypto reacts to traditional finance and when traditional finance is unstable or it's stress tested, that's when Bitcoin and crypto being a risk asset really does take a hit and you have to pay attention. Uh, I mean, you can pause this if you wanna have a bit of a read of what I said here, but I talk about derivatives and how uh, much the derivatives had an impact on this move. And it, in the end, I think it was about $2.5 billion worth of crypto was liquidated at the time. And I think that's now gone up to 5 billion as the dust has settled. So it's some serious money that gets uh, sold and liquidated off these markets and either given to exchanges or, or to someone else, another third party. All right, uh, Willie was always good with data and metrics. He just highlights that no signs of hodlers capitulating. So this hardcore cohort of long-term investors are not selling their Bitcoin. This previous sell-off, so the sell-off from say 65,000, now the sell-off now from 69,000 from these highs, it's not coming from those serious long-term holders. It's coming from larger, shorter-term holders that are more, uh, they feel a bit more, um, the emotion of the market. They feel that emotion of the market a bit more. They're looking more on the macro side of things. They're very more that short-term day trading side. Of they come in and sell their sell their position and also just short-term retail participants and traders. That's kind of what's happening here. But overall, this looks really healthy. Once the dust settles, uh, we should see a recovery just simply because we are creating price floors on the way up as, these, um, uh, as Bitcoin does sell off. These price floors are, are being held and in fact, more Bitcoin's being hoovered off the market than is being bought. Um, sorry, more Bitcoin's being hoovered off the market than is being sold. So that is a really positive thing to say. All right, uh, just two quick pieces of news that happened this month and just quickly just have a chat about it. So just in banking giant Fidelity working to let institutions borrow against uh, Bitcoin. So uh, Fidelity is absolutely massive. Uh, they have over, I think, $4 trillion worth of assets under management, and they're allowing people to borrow against their Bitcoin. This is the writing on the wall uh, for a lot of banks, and they either have to get on board with it or get out. We know Commonwealth banks moving into crypto very heavily, and I suspect at some point they're going to allow people to borrow against their cryptocurrency. So this is the future 
uh, of, of borrowing and lending. Banks can make a killing off it. And it also allows you to take loans off your cryptocurrency without ever facing that capital gains, that horrible capital gains tax, uh, and also allowing you to never actually sell. So, you know, Bitcoin is becoming that thing where it may, a lot of these Bitcoins may never ever come back on the market. If you have the ability to uh, borrow against it, you can borrow a depreciating asset, which is fiat currency, use that uh, to spend, to buy houses, you know, take out a mortgage, uh, whatever, and hold the asset that's actually appreciating at 200% uh, APY every year. So, uh, that is something I want to bring up, but this is a growing trend you need to be aware of because banks are getting to this really heavily. They see the opportunity and they want your Bitcoin. They're going to pay you um, some really beautiful um, either incentives or they're going to give you some really low interest rates to take some of this out. But uh, it's starting at the big end of town and it should filter down to the smaller end of town eventually as a lot of this Bitcoin gets locked away. Okay, and this was another really big bit of news. We know how El Salvador has made uh, Bitcoin, it's legal tender. So that's alongside US dollar. And they are just going gung-ho at adoption. And they are uh, doing something really crazy, to be honest. They're building a Bitcoin city. Now, just reading here, Bitcoin city has no income tax, no capital gain, no property tax. The only tax levy would be a 10% uh, VAT. So uh, you, all you'd have to pay living there is a 10% VAT, 5% go towards maintaining the city, and 5% will go towards uh, funding towards funding the funds. That's interesting. I would assume that's funding the bonds that they are uh, releasing. And that is backed by their uh, geothermal energy. So there's, a, there's some massive volcanoes in El Salvador. And what the president has done is he's hooked up a Bitcoin mining facility to that. He's selling Bitcoin bonds that are backed to the revenue that these uh, to the Bitcoin mining revenue. And he's selling those bonds globally. So now institutional investors can get a hold of uh, institutional grade bonds uh, without you know ever having to get out of bonds and buy Bitcoin because a lot of these big institutions and large funds and big investors are actually mandated they're required to have a structured portfolio potentially 60 40 so 60 percent bonds 40 percent equity to manage the risk but right now traditional bonds are a melting ice cube they are losing uh, so your 1% yield you're getting for a bond, if CPI inflation is at 5%, we all know that, C well, we, most of us know that inflation is probably more like in the teens, that 1% is getting wiped out almost immediately. So real rates for bonds, all these massive institutions holding all this cash in bonds, that is getting wiped out year and year uh, and the purchasing power is getting uh, evaporated. So they are absolutely keen to find an, alter an alternative to traditional bonds that just are not giving them the yield. And this is such an incredible idea. We're going to have to see how it pans out. But uh, El Salvador really moving and shaking, building a Bitcoin city. They look like they want to become the Singapore or Dubai uh, of um, Central and South America. So good on them. Let's see how this plays out. Very, very exciting, guys. I've probably gone over my 20 minutes, but as always, so much to talk about. Hope you've enjoyed this episode uh, and we'll catch you for next month as well. If you want to uh, have a chat with us, get in touch with our team and you can join our, uh, VIP, um, our VIP course will teach you everything we've covered here today as well. Uh, and also, if you just want to go a little bit easier, want to check out our newsletter, uh, you can find the link in the description. It's $49 a month, but we give you price signals as well as giving you a rundown on the on-chain situation and also some of the key themes and narratives that are happening in this market right now. We also do two fundamental analyses every single month on one massive crypto that you've all heard of and one that might be a hidden gem that you might be very interested in. And uh, Tristan, our fundamental analyst, does an amazing job at plucking it, uh, plucking all the gems out of these um, potential projects. So guys, have a wonderful day and uh, we'll see you next month. Ta, bye.